Has anybody ever seen anybody hand spinning? Hand spinning. Hand spinning. Huh? Is that by the fire? Oh, with the spinning wheel. Oh. No, he never gets used to it. Take you all the way back to the cottage industry. There's a lady sat by the fire, she's got a handful of cotton. And she controls the handful of cotton with her finger and thumb. Okay. And on a wheel, she has a spindle. She turns the wheel, and the spindle runs round. And her arm goes away from the spindle and she lets out between her finger and thumb a certain amount of cotton. Then she speeds the wheel up and the spindle increases in speed and puts twist in just like you've done. Okay? And her arm changes position and she winds the wheel slowly and winds onto the spindle what she's just made. And she does that all day long whistling. Because she's no tells to do. What do you think? Right. So that's the handful of cotton that we've just made over there. So that's the spinner's handful. Those rollers are her finger and thumb. And this carriage, with all those spindles on right down there, is going to come out to here. So that's her arm moving. Right? When it gets here, the spindles increase in speed, put twist in, and then the carriage runs back and winds what it's just made. We're going to run this in and out twice, and it will make three quarters of a mile. There's another one there, so if that one ran in and out twice, that's a mile and a half. And it's going to do that four times a minute, so these two will make three miles a minute. Wow. There's two more there, that's how many? Three and three? The same room upstairs, right above you, used to be the same. Right? So uh, every minute upstairs, there's another six miles a minute. So between the two floors, 12 miles a minute. Day in and day out. And this is only a little mill. Wow. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. all the belts start to move. How far do you think I'm going to walk in a day if I'm walking up and down there? Every time this one comes out, this one's coming out, so I'm walking about like a drunk. She told me to come off it. About 10 miles a day? Probably <laughs> more. No, it's about 10. It's a long, long day. Uh, 10 hours, 10 miles. Then how, how many miles have come? <laughs> work it out. <laughs> I'm calculating. <laughs> Six miles a minute out of this room. So six miles a work, minute. And work it out. Uh, it's only working 80%, so it'll work eight hours. Oh, wow. So that's six sixties for a start. That's 360 mile an hour times eight. <laughs> we'll do it by 10, the 10 hour day. So that's 3,600 miles. Wow. And that's just And then knock 720 off that. So and that's just this, this room? Yeah, one room. But when you get to see the weaving sheds, you'll understand why it was needed. Right. They need Try and work out how much cotton there is in, in a bolo shed. How many miles? Well, not round me, but I'm not that big. <laughs> 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 it's always one. <laughs> <laughs>
Daisies. If you can. I'll just do a bit of maths. Who's good at maths? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one pound of cotton spins 840 yards of wands. Right? And we're spinning very near to tens. The, fat, the bigger the number, the finer the cotton. So we're, we get roughly 8,400 yards from a pound of cotton. Now, ladies, when you've done your ironing and you've got half a dozen shirts or blouses, if you weigh them, they weigh about a pound yeah, before you put them in the dryer. So how much cotton do you think has been made to make the pile of shirts? OK. Any questions? No? <coughs> Good. Brew time. <laughs> before you finish, John, can you tell us about the stuff that you used to do in the mill? What Me. did you have? Uh, started in 1962, I was an apprentice fit from the big factory where I grew up basically. We used to go to different customer mills and we used to go installing machinery or moving machinery. And then the industry went into decline like all industries do. And I started working in the mills, looking after machinery, uh, servicing it, moving it. And then, because I was brought up right, if you will, like a few other lads, we got promotion and we became departmental heads. Eventually, we were shift supervisors and then uh, what they call head carders, three of us made it from the group I grew, grew up with. Quite a responsibility. But then things change and you go back down to the bottom and you work your way back up again. But all sorts of jobs working in all sorts of uh, conditions, fighting fires, getting hurt because the machines are dangerous. I've actually had this finger chopped off and stitched back. You can see a white mark there where it's been stitched. So the mills are dangerous. That was my fault, not the machine's fault, my fault, which is what most accidents are. Uh, I've got people out of the machinery who've been caught. Uh, who, who doesn't like gruesome tales? <laughs> Hands up, who doesn't like a gruesome tale? Really you're not? No, we do. Right. <laughs> Put your fingers in your ears. I once pulled the bloke out of a carding machine and all his hand had been stripped off down to the bone. Oh. It's called degloving. Oh. That's the medical term. Yeah. That was a lot of blood. No, not a lot. I picked a, two fingers up that a bloke had lost. So you get all sorts of things to do. But the worst experience is firefighting, because mm -hmm. the rooms very quickly fill up with smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, you know, the flames are nothing, but once the it's smoke's there, you start gasping for breath. On, on the cotton as well, yeah. the fumes must get bad. <laughs> and it travels quicker than any of you can move. Who thinks they can run quick? Mm -hmm. It would be you. <laughs> <laughs> if I set fire to that, you'd be still stood still and the fire would be down at the bottom. Yeah. It just goes <laughs> boof like that. <laughs> Horrible. But I enjoyed every <coughs> minute of it for some reason. What was the mill's habit? Was it a happy place to work, would you say? Yeah, they, they have their own way of sorting people out, mills. Because you're a team, right from the, the labourer to the manager, you're a team. But if you don't fit in, they're getting rid of you. And your face don't fit you out. They make sure of that. Because they're all dependent on one another. <laughs> Starting downstairs, the guy who makes the laps downstairs is giving that person a job. So if they don't get it right, they struggle. If they don't fill the cans right and make the laps right, the next people get in trouble. <laughs> And if it's not right when it comes here, the spinners who are all big blokes, they're going back to your ear all, won't they? Right, mm. so, so, so you, you have just sort yourself in. Mm. Yeah, either fit in or get out. And if you got sacked from the job, could you go to another mill and get a job, or would people talk about you and make well, it? it's called blackballing, that. If, if you were, if normally, you, if you got fed up and had a bit of a ruckus with the manager, when, in, when the industry was in its heyday, you could just say, oh, up yours like you know and walk down to the next mill and get a job but things got tighter and tighter and tighter and if you were sacked then you would have to uh, prove yourself very very able to get
get another job because the manager, obviously they want references. Yeah. Why was he sacked? She sacked him because of that. I'm not, not employing you. Nice. They were tight ships. No messing about. Me and my mate saw two young lads fighting with a horse pipe. Just turned the horse pipe up and blew him out of the door, basically. <laughs> I sent a bloke home for being drunk. You know the laps at the back? They, they weighed in the region of 56 pounds, the one we were using, and this bloke came in drunk at two o'clock. And he would try to put a lap in the back of a card, and the lap won. And he had him pegged out on the floor with his trousers around his ankles. I sent him home. He's, he wandered around Rochdale well half past ten at night because he dirt warm his, his missus had a cane. <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault when he came in the following day. Yeah, he just got his naturalisation papers. He were a Polish boy. Rochdale sergeant had just given him his papers, you know, so they cracked a bottle of vodka. I don't know what the sergeant was like. He were up with his tree. Eh? <laughs> so people had a laugh. So they, so they did. If you can't laugh when you're at work, don't go. <laughs>